Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, or wrinkles, if you want to retexturize your skin, one of the neat benefits of Retinol is it helps retexturize the skin. If you want your skin to be softer and smoother, Retinol is also powerfully anti-aging. To this day, there's only a couple of ingredients. There's only two ingredients that have been shown to reverse the signs of aging, literally reverse the signs of aging when used on the skin. Not in a test tube, not in a not in a dish, but on your skin. And those two ingredients are vitamin C and vitamin A. Retinol and specifically fat-soluble vitamin C. If you want softer skin, if you want anti-age skin, if you want smoother skin, if you're dealing with acne and you want to get rid of your blemishes, you need to know, you need to be using our Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Of course, if you want to join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, you need to be on my team, my Brightside Ben team. Please call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also sign up or purchase longevity products right off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're talking, continuing talking about the ketogenic diet, the, the uh, eat fat, get healthy diet. I love that idea. Eat fat, get healthy. And by getting healthy, I'm talking about losing weight. I'm talking about having more energy, building muscle, fighting cancer, lowering your blood sugar, reducing the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and Bell's palsy and other neurological disorders, including seizure disorders, which was what the ketogenic diet was first developed for. Who's going to benefit from, from a ketosis? Anyone who's overweight, anyone who has type 1 or type 2 diabetes, anyone who has cancer, anyone who's dealing with heart disease or any neurological disorder, any digestive disorder, and that includes Crohn's disease and gastritis and cirrhosis and hepatitis, anyone who's got respiratory problems, anyone who's got an inflammatory condition. Pretty much we just covered most people. Pretty much we just covered everybody. That means everybody benefits from the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is an energy diet. It provides the body with generous amounts of the cleanest and densest form of food energy, the fats. In the world of nutrition, you've got two kinds of nutrients. You've got your macronutrients and your micronutrients. Your macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbs, are storage forms of energy. They're like logs. Your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals, they activate the energy. They're like sparks. They turn on the energy system. 
the logs, the fats and the carbs and the protein are potential energy. And of all, that, uh, of all the various forms of potential energy, fats are the densest form. Fats contain trapped energy. Scientists call it potential energy. Food fats are very similar to the kind of stuff that runs our cars and our lawnmowers and our factories. The Industrial, industrial Revolution was fueled by fats in the form of fossil fuels. And when it comes to our modern way of life, it's all about energy. When it comes to life itself, it's all about energy. When it comes to health and the effective operation of the body, it's all about energy. Disease is a lack of energy phenomena. Health is an abundance of energy phenomena. And you can think of this energy, at least from a biological perspective or a health perspective, as the life force. And that means you can think of the energy that's trapped in fats as life energy, a manifestation of the life force. Potential, yes, but it is still a manifestation in a potential format of this life force. Fats are nature's most powerful source of this life force. They carry the life force in a more concentrated form than the other two forms of energy, carbs and protein. This life force that's in the body, or that's in food for that matter, has gone by many names. We call it ki, or chi, or ilan vital. The, the Greeks called it pneuma, the Hindus called it prana, the alchemists called it quintessence, Catholics and Jesuits called it the Holy Spirit, Dr. Wilhelm Reich called it orgone energy. Whatever its name is, the main point is this, the life force is the livingness of our body. It, what's, it's what gives our body it, the ability to move. If you've ever seen a dead body, the difference between a dead body and a live body is nothing more than this life force. The dead body looks different, yes, but it still has arms and legs and hands and feet and has everything we have, but it doesn't have that life force. And this life force is what gives us our physical, our, our, our physical well-being. And for that matter, it gives us our mental well-being. It is not in the body's true nature to be sick. It's not in the body's uh, true nature to be low energy, yet that is the way most of us live. It's in the body's nature to be high energy. It's in the body's nature to heal and renew and rest and relax and jump and move effortlessly. Yet how many of us can say we live this way? Very few of us, at least very few of us adults. When we're young, we've got this life force in, in spades. But as we get older, and it doesn't take very long to get older, I'm talking in our twi late 20s and early 30s, this life force starts to diminish. And this is a, uh, the, the uh, precedent of the disease state, the, the diminishment of the life force. And by the way, if, we're, if our life force is diminishing, you can rest assured that we're somehow not living in our bodies, that we've withdrawn from our bodies into our minds and into our brains. And this is a very fundamental idea when it comes to health. The mental nature versus the physical nature. The Greeks called it psyche versus soma. The mental nature is our psyche. And most of us live in our psyche. We don't live in our soma. We don't live in our bodies. We don't inhabit our bodies. We don't respect our bodies. We couldn't smoke. We couldn't eat McDonald's. We couldn't drink alcohol. We couldn't take prescription drugs if we really lived, to, lived in and listened to and respected our somas, our bodies. Breathing activates or, or, or sparks up the soma. Feeding sparks up the soma. Movement sparks up the soma. This is one of the, one of the reasons why paying attention to the body, particularly paying attention to the breathing process, breathing with awareness is such an important aspect of health. It's called mindfulness. Mindfulness is when you apply the mind to the body. Mindfulness can be applied to any physical, any physical activity, washing the dishes. Mindfulness can be uh, applied to something, uh, uh, some unpleasant task. By applying mindfulness to unpleasant tasks, we make those tasks more enjoyable. Likewise with breathing. By applying mindfulness to breathing, we make breathing enjoyable. Breathing can be an incredible pleasure. Ask, ask somebody who's got emphysema. If you ever uh, couldn't breathe at night, if you ever couldn't breathe at night, you're, we're all clogged up, you know how miserable that can be. Just something being, uh, as simple as being able to breathe in the evening uh, when you're sleeping can be an amazingly pleasurable experience. 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. Got years of archives at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can purchase products off of brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Longevity products, that is. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at 844-866-735-2470, If you want to check out our bone broth protein, go to brightsidehealth.com. Bone broth protein, of course, is a wonderful way to, to initiate ketogenesis or the, uh, get going on your ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet being a high, a high fat, moderate protein diet. You gotta make sure you're having enough protein no matter what you're doing, and you gotta make sure you're going low carb if you're gonna be using the ketogenic diet. Bone broth protein is not only tasty, but it's also a great source of amino acids for building connective tissue. 25% of the body or more is made up of connective tissue. If, you got, uh, if you're dealing with uh, 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 prolapses, prolapse uterus or pro- prolapse bladder, perhaps, or if you're dealing with uh, bone issues, osteoporosis or wrinkles, all of these are signs that your connective tissue is starting to break down. Very common. One of the best ways to build up your connective tissue is exercise, especially in the presence of connective tissue building proteins or amino acids. And that's where our bone broth protein comes in. Get yourself in the gym for a little bit. Don't don't have to do a lot. And then come home and do your bone broth protein. It tastes great. And it's a wonderful source of all the building nutrients for the nutrients that are important for building connective tissue particularly amino acids, glucosamine, as well as high aluronic acid. Brightsidehealth.com, you find our chocolate and vanilla bone broth protein formulated by Jordan Rubin, by the way. All right, so we're talking the ketogenic diet, we're talking the life force. The ketogenic diet is a source of fat, is a way to get nature's densest source of energy, that is fats. When I say energy, think the life force. Of course, you need breathing to make the whole thing happen. Breathing is super, super, super important for activating the energy that's trapped in fats or anything, really. That's how, that's how energy is produced. All, that, all the energy in fats is potential energy, and then oxygen comes along and sparks it up. And when you pay attention to the breathing process, and when you pay attention to anything, but when you, especially when you pay attention to the breathing process, you breathe more effectively. When you pay attention to anything you're doing, you're going to do it more effectively. When it comes to breathing, breathing with with awareness, with mindfulness is a key element when it comes to health. Key element. In fact, if we just breathed with awareness, we would notice our blood pressure was dropping. If we just breathed with awareness, we would notice we were more relaxed. If we just breathed with awareness, we would notice we were sleeping better. Breathing with awareness activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Breathing activates fats. Without oxygen, all that wonderful energy that is trapped in fats would be useless to us. That means without correct breathing, without deep, slow, powerful breathing, we won't be able to maximally leverage the power of the ketogenic diet. Fats by themselves are potential energy. They're sleeping. The energy has to be released for, us to, for it to do us any good. And it's oxygen that sparks that energy, turning it into a biological fire. The energy in fats is dormant to sleep. Oxygen from breathing wakes it up. Fats plus oxygen equals energy release. And this is, this is the key to understanding the importance of the breathing process. The ketogenic diet, the high fat, low carb diet is an energy diet and breathing is a key element of the energy process. It's the combination of energy that's locked up in foods, proteins and carbs, and particularly fats, as well as, uh, uh, as, well as oxygen that energizes the body, that amps up the life force. If you're thinking, well, I should be breathing deeply while I'm eating. Yes, you're right. Oxygen allows us to release energy from foods. We should be breathing deeply when we eat. This is one of the reasons why you don't want to eat in the car, why you don't want to eat at a business meeting, or why you don't want to eat when you're under stress. This is why you want to eat when you're relaxed. When you're relaxed, you're breathing better. When you're breathing better, you're relaxed. Oxygen is important for for us to be able to access the energy from foods. And I sometimes wonder how much of our overeating epidemic, and we have an overeating epidemic, is due to the fact that we're not oxygenating while we're eating. Try it. If you'll notice that when you're uh, oxygenating or paying attention to the oxygenation process as you're eating, that you're gonna eat less food. You're gonna be fuller faster. 
And it's no accident, by the way, that both the ketogenic diet and oxygen are anti-cancer. Both the high-fat diet and oxygen, whether through breathing correctly or a hyperbaric oxygen chamber where they drive oxygen into your respiratory tract, they're both anti-cancer. Cancer only occurs when cells are not being energized. And cancer, I was just reading this, uh, cancer has now overtaken heart disease as a leading cause of death in, uh, in, in 12 European countries. Here's this article. I just, just read it this morning, actually. In this country, uh, cancer is just slightly behind, just slightly behind heart disease as a leading cause of death. This is an, uh, from the European Heart Journal. It just came out on Monday. Cancer has now overtaken heart disease as the main cause of death in 12 European countries. And we always hear about how, uh, how successful and how wonderful all our anti-cancer strategies are. Oh my God, we spend so much money on cancer and hardly any of the statistics have budged, except perhaps for the worse. Breathing is the ultimate example of our physical nature, of the soma. The breathing process is the most obvious manifestation of aliveness. And when we breathe consciously, when we pay attention to the mechanics, and the dynamics of the inhalation and the exhalation, our attention is immediately placed on the body. And while our attention is, is, uh, is, is placed on the body, while we're paying attention to our bodies, we are our bodies. We're in our bodies. We inhabit our bodies. And for most of us, just the idea of paying attention to the body will cause the relax, initiate the relaxation response. Just paying attention to it. If you have insomnia and you can't sleep, pay attention to something in the body. Pay attention to a body rhythm. Pay attention to some kind of movement or dynamism in the body and you will find yourself beginning to relax. And if we do it long enough, not only will we find ourselves beginning to relax, we'll find ourselves beginning to feel better. And in terms of our eating behaviors, if we place our attention on our bellies rather than our brains, we're going to find ourselves eating better food and eating less of it. Overeating is a classic sign of eating from our mind of eating mentally rather than physically. And because eating is a physical activity, this does not serve us. This is why we overeat. The mind is never satisfied. The body is satisfied with just a couple of bites. Eating because we think we should, or because something sounds good, or when we're depressed, or when we're triggered by something, this is a classic sign of, uh, uh, this is a, a, a classic man, a, a precursor to, to uh, being overweight, a classic precursor to weight gain. The fastest way to lose weight, on the other hand, and to overcome poor eating habits or to overcome eating addiction is to learn to place our attention, our awareness on our psyche or on our soma rather than our psyche, on our bodies, particularly on our bellies, rather than on our heads. And the opportunity to eat arises or even while you're eating, try placing your attention, move your attention down to your belly, and you may not like it because you'll still have that big old plate filled with food, but you're not gonna wanna eat as much. And then you'll find your attention naturally goes up to your head because you wanna eat. Eating is kind of a little trick that we play on ourselves, unfortunately, not in the wild, not naturally. Uh, lions don't trick themselves. Only human beings do because we're so darn smart. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number on The Bright Side. We'll get your calls just in just a moment. If you're on hold, hang on. If you're interested in uh, checking out our bone broth protein, please go to brightsidehealth.com. Check out our chocolate. I like the chocolate. That, that's my favorite, but some folks like vanilla. We got chocolate and vanilla. Bone broth protein, your beauty protein, also important for bone health, health of the, di the, the digestive tract. Folks dealing with hernias or prolapses need more uh, bone broth, amino acids, bone broth protein, if you will. You can't make uh, your bone soup if you're... Uh, if you are uh, got too busy to make bone soup, try the bone broth protein. Just add it to water, and I, I like putting a little frozen cherries in there, some glutamine powder, beef up its, uh, its amino acid benefits, throw in a crack and egg in your bone broth protein. It makes an awesome, awesome breakfast, especially if you can't do whey protein. I still love my whey protein, but some folks can't do whey protein. So bone broth protein is a, is a uh, substitute protein, although I 
under ideal circumstances, you do want to get your protein from whey and egg as well as from bone broth and cartilage. So let's say USA Today had a really interesting article. Price of cholesterol drugs may get painful. $14,000 a year for an anti-cholesterol drug. These are the new drugs. Statin drugs are going off patent. So the drug companies now have a new wave of lowering cholesterol. You can inject yourself with something called a PCSK9 inhibitor, which reduces LDL cholesterol. This idea of cholesterol and heart disease and lowering cholesterol, you guys, I'm telling you as a healthcare professional, as a scientist, a pharmacist, as somebody who's been studying this stuff for 30 years, it is one of the biggest healthcare scams. It is one of the biggest scams ever, not just healthcare, any scams. It is a scam, scam, scam. Lowering cholesterol with a drug is one of the stupidest medical ideas ever, and there are been a lot of, and there are a lot of stupid medical ideas. To take a drug to force your body, to compel your body to lower cholesterol is the height of biochemical, medical, and health stupidity. And any doctor who, who, who suggests somebody get on a $14,000 a year drug in the interest of protecting their heart needs to go back to, needs to find another profession. Sorry to say. All right, I don't want to, I don't want to digress into anger here. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Irma in Michigan. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. What's going on, Irma? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Hello? What's cracking? How can okay. we help you? All right, thank you. Um, I just had open heart surgery recently. Okay. I'm a vegetarian. Okay. I want off, trying to wean off, I want to know how to wean off the drugs that I'm taking. What do you want? I did order and re um, Full roast, uh, what's that? Full roast. Furosemide. Semide. Yeah. Uh-huh. Eloquis. Okay. Uh, Veronolactone. Okay. And Tresto. And Tresto? Uh, Vito, uh -huh. Oh, my God. They're, they're drugging you up pretty good. Though I don't want to hear any more of this okay. horrible news. They're drugging oh, okay. you up pretty good. Okay. Here's Here's the problem, okay. though. Here's the problem. Your, uh -huh. your, your body is in duress right now. So you're mm -hmm. going to have to do this very carefully. What, did, they, did they do a bypass? Yeah. All right. So here's the thing, Irma, with all due respect. You've been mucking up the system for a long time. Okay? And I'm not saying mm -hmm. this to beat you up. I'm saying this that you've got to understand what we're dealing with here. For most folks, I would say get off the darn drugs and get on a nutritional program. But for you, I can't say that. Because your system okay. is, you're like, um, you know, you've got a flat tire there, so to speak. Okay. You're, you're, not oper you're not running on four wheels. So the, the medicine is keeping you in the game. Not, it, it's not keeping mm -hmm. you maximized. It's not keeping you at optimum health, but it's keeping you in the game. So what you have to do is you've got to change your life. As much as I love my vegetarian friends, vegetarianism is not necessarily a healthy way to eat, I'm sorry to say. Because with okay. vegetarianism, you eat a lot of grains, and you eat a lot of beans, and you eat a lot of foods that whack out your blood sugar. You follow me? So a soy, a soy burger, you know, it, it, it's hard to say if it's better than a hamburger because they're both kind of crappy potentially. But if you do your okay. hamburger right, it's way better for you from a physical perspective. If you do it right, I'm not talking about McDonald's, but if you do it right, it's way better for you than a soy burger, especially for your heart. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the problem, mm -hmm. the foundation of heart disease is blood sugar problems. The foundation of all disease is blood sugar problems. So if you've been a vegetarian a long time and not doing it carefully and correctly, that is not doing the high-carb foods and making sure that you uh, get your B vitamins and your chromium, your vanadium, your, your vanadium, your selenium, your other nutrients, you could have been doing a lot of damage to yourself. So what I would be doing if I were you is going to the ketogenic diet immediately. For anybody with heart disease, have you heard us talking about the ketogenic diet? Lately, yes, the last yeah. couple of weeks, we've been talking about it for maybe a month now. The ketogenic diet is a heart-friendly diet especially for people who have cardiomyopathy or who've had open heart surgery. So that means a, mm -hmm. that's high fat. Now your doctor's probably going to cringe when you tell them that. But ask him to read up on ketones. The heart runs on saturated fat. Ask your doctor if he knows that. He probably does. But maybe not. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? That your heart depends on saturated fat? No. Yeah, most people don't. So go ketogenic. That means more coconut oil, more lard, more butter, more eggs. All the kinds of foods they probably told you not to eat, by the way. Those are ketogenic foods. But you have to eat those foods in the presence or the lack of presence of carbohydrates. Low carb has to accompany high fat to go ketogenic. 
So go ketogenic, read up on the ketogenic diet, listen to the last few programs we've been talking about the ketogenic diet. Also make sure you're doing your fatty nutrients. You should be on your ultimate EFA capsules, nine a day. Make, make sure you're using vitamin E, 400 international units a day. Make sure you're using coenzyme Q10. I'd be doing 100 milligrams a day, maybe even 200, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Make sure you're doing magnesium from your OsteoFX or beyond OsteoFX. You want about 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of magnesium a day. Zero tolerance for, for sweets, desserts, uh, fruit juice. Even fruits, you gotta be very careful. If not zero tolerance, at least be very careful with fruits. Certainly anything with sucrose, that is table sugar, needs to be avoided. And you should, it would probably be wise for you to do sugar metabolizing or sugar processing nutrients like niacin, the ultimate niacin from longevity, as well as chromium and vanadium. All the B-complex, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, sip on it slowly, but all the B-complex is important, as well as electrolytes. I'm giving you tons of stuff here, my dear. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. They well, let me tell you a well, couple more things in the oh. interest of other people listening. Okay. Arginine okay. and taurine are two incredibly important amino acids for the heart and also for blood sugar. 500, anywhere from 200 to 500 milligrams or even up to a gram of taurine a day. And by the way, taurine is only found in animal food. So if you're a vegetarian, the odds are very good that you're missing taurine or at least not getting enough, not making enough, or not getting enough. Um, I'm not even sure if you, I think you can make taurine, but you're, you're not getting enough taurine if you're a vegetarian, unless you're supplementing. And arginine, about 1,000 milligrams a day of arginine. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay, that's okay. I ordered and received the uh, Healthy Heart and Brain Pack. Okay. You, you need From more than that, but that's a good start. Okay, that won't interact with the medication, will it? Yeah, it'll make the medication work better. It'll make you work okay. better. Any, anybody okay. who tries to tell you that the nutrition will somehow interact with medication doesn't understand how the nature of nutrition. Nutrition makes your medicine work better. It makes your body clear the medicine out better so you feel, you feel better, and it makes everything that you want the drugs to do work better. So anyway, I got to go, Irma. Thanks for your call. I hope we helped you out. Have a beautiful day. God bless you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben from the journal PLOS Medicine, Public Library of Science Medicine. Check this out. The duration of overweight and obesity in women's lives is associated with cancer risk. That means if you're overweight and you're obese for a long period of time, you got a higher risk of cancer. And this is why the ketogenic diet is anti-cancer and anti-weight, or it helps you lose weight anyway. I'm telling you guys, high fat is the way to go. High fat, low carb. Gotta say that. High fat, low carb. It's not just high fat. It's high fat, low carb. And actually, it's high fat, low carb, low calorie. High fat, low carb, low calorie. That's the way to go. Eat less food. Eat less carbs. Eat more fat. Make sure you're getting enough protein. It isn't that complicated. And don't fall for the baloney. Don't buy into the lie. Don't buy into the medical model. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Mary in Michigan. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. Um, I'm calling you for some direction. Yes. Uh, I've spoken to you in the past about uh, my digestive problems, and I, I work on it constantly. Um, but I have developed a pattern, and I cannot figure out the cause of it, so I'm, I'm hoping you can give me some idea maybe where I should go. Okay. Um, I have for the past year, uh, on the average of every other week, uh, getting uh, sick at my stomach and um, having, you know, a lot of vomiting and, and, and some awful. diarrhea with it usually. Okay. And, and it I, only, fl and it fl I, hang on, Mary, hang on, Mary. Yeah. It flares up every couple of weeks, you're saying? Yeah. It flares? Yeah. Okay, that's and good. I mean, Flares it comes are good. On suddenly, it comes on very suddenly. F f suddenly to you, it does, nothing comes on suddenly to the body, but suddenly to you, and that's good because the flares are very important information. It means you're doing something. If something happens chronically all the time. It's and it doesn't get worse or doesn't get better. It's harder to assess what it is. You can still assess what it is, but it's harder. Flares are your best friend when it comes to figuring out what's going on. So here's what you need to do. And now you're saying stomach, but I don't know if you really mean stomach. You mean your digestive system. You don't literally mean your stomach. Your stomach is located higher in the chest. The intestine is in the middle. 
higher up in the chest is where the stomach is. So a lot of times we say stomach, but we mean intestine. So it, it, where, that where do you feel? That feels like where it's coming from. <laughs> from the center? From the center, yeah. Okay, I mean, then it deep, could be stomach. Very deep. Deep and in the center part, not, not by your belly button. Right. Okay, good. It could, it could, that, it could be the stomach. I'm, but for some folks, <clears throat> they'll say stomach when they mean intestine. Anyway, uh, stop eating, Mary. And by oh, the way, <laughs> okay, you stop, I mean zero food. Nothing. Yeah, okay. For two or three days? Can you do it for two or three days? Yeah. Okay, good. Then when you start eating again, write everything down. Are you doing that, a food diary? I, I have been doing that, and there's nothing in, there seems to be no pattern to it. Okay, well, so what happened, when, when was the last time you ate, you had your flare-up? Yesterday. Okay, and what did you eat a couple hours before? I had grapes first thing in the morning. Okay. And I had um, just a couple of bites of some millet, cooked millet. Okay. Well, there you, you know, either of those can cause a problem, so that's good. Now you got one piece of information, millet and grapes before you got your stomach pain. That's just, that's just data point one, all right? Okay. You're going to have, uh, you continue doing your food diary. I want to know what happens, what you ate before data point two, and I want to know about data point three, Okay. So I don't, know what you, I don't understand what you just said. Okay, so data point one is grapes and millet, and then you got a, had a had a flare up, right? Yeah. That's the first data point. The second data point is going to come maybe two, three days from now. Okay, you get another flare up, and the data point is going to tell you, and you're going to th- say, see what you ate, and that's going to be your second data point. So you may say, well, I had oatmeal and I had watermelon. Okay, so data point one tells us, I'm just hypothesizing, data point one tells us you had millet and grapes, data point two tells us oatmeal and watermelon. Then you go to, then then maybe a week later you have another flare up, right? What did I eat a couple hours before? Oh, I had uh, Cheerios and bananas. Okay, Okay, so we're starting to accumulate information. Now we see every time there's Cheerios, millet, oatmeal, I'm being, I'm just giving you hypothesis. Okay. Every time there's Cheerios, millet and oatmeal and there's watermelon, grapes and bananas, I get a flare up. So So obviously there's something. It doesn't have to be the same food, but the same type of food. It may be, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just telling you we need data points. Okay. You understand? Uh, Without data points, you cannot form a picture. It's like, it's called triangulation. You need to have three points to figure out where a phone call is coming from, for example. Okay. That's called triangulation. If you have one dot in the middle of your canvas, you don't see anything. But if you put two and three and four dots, a picture starts to emerge. You need data points. That's how you solve a problem. Doctors don't worry about that. Doctors right. will just give you a drug. But if you're going to do this thing correctly, you have to be a medical detective. And this yeah. is what a doctor should be. You got, in order to solve, a, a, in order to solve a mystery, you need clues. In order okay. to connect the dots, you got to collect the dots. You follow me, Mary? Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah, get some data points and give me a call back. We'll put this thing together for you. All right. Okay. All right, Mary, I got to motivate. I got a bunch of calls here. Have a beautiful day. I hope we helped you. Thanks for your call. All right, uh, let's go to to Gail in New Jersey. Welcome to the Bright Side, Gail. Hello there, Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? Okay, um, a customer of ours uh, has the uh, ability, affects his ability of moving food to his stomach. And the doctor uh, said it. I'll spell it for you. A-C-H-A-L-A-S-I-A. A C H A L A S I A, achalasia. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Right, yeah. Okay. It's like sometimes he might have to have an operation to stretch his breath. Okay, okay. Now that, that's, uh, does it happen with solids as well as liquids? Uh, probably solids more. Okay, so keep them going on liquids, first of all. That's the most important thing. Uh, ju- vegetable juices and um, um, bone soup. Also, beyond tangy tangerine, vegetable soups, as much liquid nutrition as possible, as long, and, but make sure he's getting his fiber. You follow me? Okay. Okay, now, that's to get him nourished. Second, and that's a must-have, because if he's not getting food, he's not going to get nourishment, and that can com- cause a pr- uh, problems downstream. So first and foremost, get him nutrition. Secondly, what else does he have going on? Nobody just has achalasia. Yeah, that's the Does, only thing that he said to my husband, so I don't know. Okay, so you got to find out what else is going on. Again, just like with Mary, or with our last caller, uh, we got to get some dots going. Otherwise, we don't have a picture right. of what's happening in the body. You follow me? It's okay. not like you, you can't just approach the problem at the level of the problem. you got to form a picture to see what's going on in the big picture sense. 
You've yeah. got to see what's happening in the body. One point doesn't tell us that. So you need to find out what else is happening. How old is this guy? Um, I think he's like About. 55. Okay, so he's That's had a lot of time to muck up his body if he's like a you right. know, normal person. I don't know if it just started either, so. If it just started, well, it might have just started to him, but something is, something's going on underneath the radar if something just starts. Nothing just happens in the body unless you get hit by a bus. If, if you have some kind of bodily breakdown, it's guaranteed it's been progressing for a long period of time under the radar, stealth fashion. And this is why paying attention to your body can be so helpful. You'll notice these things. So anyway, achalasia is very rare. It only happens, yeah, it you know, one in a million kind of thing. Not quite, but it's pretty rare. So... Uh, what you got to do is you got to figure out what else is going on so we can figure we can form a picture of what's happening in the system just the just the problem swallowing doesn't tell us anything okay but okay. in the meantime get him on the beyond tangy tangerine get him on the bone broth protein if he doesn't have a vitamix get him a vitamix because he's probably malnourished and once you get these nutrients in his system he's going to feel a lot better you follow me okay. Yes, All right, yes. and then let me know if you want me to help you. Let me uh, call us back when you can get some some other uh, uh, other other components to that. to the process. Some Very other good. data Thank points. Thank you, Ben. You're great. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, bye, Gail. All right, uh, let's go to Angela. Uh, Angela, what's going on, Angela? Good morning. Hello, Pharmacist Ben. How are you? I'm good. What's going on? Uh, question for you, kind of similar to the digestive issues, but it's yeah. more of me trying to battle my adrenal slash androgenic acne and i know you always say start you're still, with you're still dealing with that well, let me t give you a couple tips real quick because i'm going to run out of time okay number one i've got a uh, acne supplement coming out here in the next couple of weeks blemish repair complex we we uh, we've already been handing it out a little bit uh, and that's specially designed for all acne but particularly for androgenic acne in the meantime are you on zinc 50 milligrams a day yes okay, are you on vitamin a 20,000 iu a day yes are you using retinol? No. Get yourself my uh, top uh, retinol 5% gel. Are you uh, doing uh, selenium? No. Get on selenium, 400 to 600 micrograms a day. Uh, see if you can notice a connection between flare-ups and anything you ate, particularly sugars and fast-burning sugar. Fast-burning sugars will exacerbate androgenic acne. For the listeners, this is acne that's related to the male hormone system that appears on the T-zone. Angela, I'm out of time, sweetheart. Uh, that's some great ideas for you, but if you call back tomorrow, I can help you out some more. I, we're just out of time. I apologize for that. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you for your call. Uh, androgenic acne, uh, anybody dealing with T-zone acne, you want to suspect androgenic acne, and you're going to want to know about our blemish repair complex, which will be out in a couple weeks. I'll be telling you all about that here in the next uh, next in the, in the uh, weeks ahead. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.